Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video we will be colouring in Dream World by Black River Arts or Carl on Douglas and we are using the Black Widow pencils. These were um, requested uh, so as always. I work through the requests that I have and this was the next one in the list was to do uh, a dream world page in black widow pencils so i have all of the black widow sets so there will be a bit of a mixture between the sets but we will use the black widow pencils today now all i've done in preparation um, is the sky of this page i have based in um, a very very pale lavender in fact, it's called Pale Lavender in the Touch New 145. It doesn't matter which alcohol marker set you use. Just find a really nice, pale, cool-toned purple. Um, that's if you want that colour. Of course, any really pale colour. You can do blue, pink, purple. Any of those colours should go quite nicely with the colour scheme um, that we're going to set up. And you just pop it all over the sky obviously it's an alcohol marker so make sure you don't stop colouring until you finish so you won't get um, a streaked line of where one set of alcohol meets the next and just go around the moon and the only things that I haven't um, coloured over in the sky I've left this planet here and this part planet and ever so slightly this one and this tiny one. Everything else I've just popped a solid layer of one layer of this very pale lavender uh, so that we don't have to spend three million years doing <laughs> um, a pencil background. I thought this might make life simpler and we would try something new. Um, my flowers I've decided to go for um, a bit of a mix of a yellow and an orange colour scheme um, and so I will show you what I have chosen for my two sets so the orange I'm thinking uh, let's see um, I'm going to go ice cream 126 to honeycomb uh, 07 to pumpkin which is 14 and egg yolk which is 28. Uh, one of those is a monarch, one is a scorpion and two are black widows and they're not on. That might help. Let's do that. <laughs> Fail. Um, and then for the lighter more yellowy flowers I'm thinking that we will try uh, milk 067, lemonade 25 and carrot 006 and that is a skin tone uh, light set, a black widow and a monarch. So we're going to start with these beautiful flowers. This is the page with the moon, the flowers and the rabbits on. You will be able to see on the thumbnail. I always post the picture onto there. And as always with darker grayscale, I like to start with my darker colour first and then work into the lighter one. So I'm just going to sharpen my pencil slightly and we'll just start in the middle. Um, I work my darkest tone into the darker sections of that grey scale, giving myself a nice clean edge to work to and then I feather that out on the edges so that it's going to layer nicely into the next colour. My darkest orange will be my shadow colour as I don't really use grey or black to shade with and to be honest on grey scale 
the shading's already there for you, so it is unnecessary. And as you can see, where we've got a close little shadow, I'm quite a, a sharp and defined line. And then everywhere else that we're just darkness, I fade out as we get towards the edge, towards the next colour. It allows your colours to blend into each other nicely. And not get those harsh segregating lines between colours. Haven't used the Black Widows um, on this paper. Not this paper. I have, of course used it. Black Widows on this paper, but um, on this kind of grey scale before, so it will be interesting to see how they do. I would imagine, as they are one of my favourites, they will do just fine. And you can see now all that darker shadowed area has the pumpkin colour down on it. So I'm then going to work to my next colour which I have egg yolk and I'm going to lay that everywhere that's a medium tone. It's quite a yellowy colour actually is that? Hmm. We will see. So everywhere that's slightly shadowed still, but not quite as dark, we're going to layer this next colour. And as always, just fading it out towards where it will meet the next colour so they will blend nicely together. How is everyone doing? I know the times can feel a little bit trying at the moment with all the trouble um, going on for those of you in America at the moment. And then of course for those of us in the UK, we just entered a, a third lockdown. Uh, I've probably never told you this, but I work in uh, dental, I know, <laughs> so popular. Um, so we are, of course, con continuing to work. So I'm still in work, uh, a little bit more than full time, actually, at the moment. We are very busy. Uh, so that was egg yolk. Moving to this very pale orange, this honeycomb colour. We're going to layer that into those that are very slightly shadowed now. So they're not quite white areas, but they're not very dark at all. I am going to add that to my yellow a little bit just to give that yellow a peachy tone. So yeah, I work in um, well, I work in a, a dental practice um, in the orthodontic department, as that is what I do. I uh, I work with braces, so I adjust and fit and remove dental appliances so the train tracks that you see people with um, 
as this lockdown seems to be a lot more confusing than last time as to the places they've deemed to continue production so they tell us to continue working so we are Gonna fade some of that orange a little bit more lightly now over the top of those other colours. My lights are horrendous. That looks very, very grainy compared to in real life and then the final tone that I have I have this ice cream which it might be a little bit too pink but we'll try and see let's see how we like it so I hope 2021 is finding you all in good health and good spirits. I know it's getting more difficult with so many people thought things would be settling down by now. But at least there is a vaccine in the works now. We can only hope things quickly change. Uh, that ice cream colour is just peachy enough to be quite a nice highlight colour actually. So I'm going to keep that. I'm just going slightly over that those yellow areas as well just to blend my colours together. Do wipe your darker colours back off your pencil. And now we just fill in all those very pale highlight areas with this one. to brush away the excess there we go so like anything at first it's not going to look much of anything but it has to be taken in context as you start to build those up and it's surrounded by the others they will start to look much better I'll do a few of these uh, a couple of these with you um and then we'll do some leaves as well i think um that should give you enough of a basis for working along with those so i'm going back to my darkest orange which is the pumpkin um i think we'll do this one I'm trying to pick different shapes for you so that We have a bit of everything. We need to work out what would be green here. Uh, I think I'm going to start about there. And again, just a nice sharp edge to work to. This petal bends back on itself, so that is why we have this little bit of darkness just underneath the edge. I 
feather a little bit where it will meet the next colour. Put this little petal back here, all in darkness. I'm just going to make that orange. And this behind the other. to try and keep these sparkles uncovered so we can then add some white back over later and you'll still have that lovely sparkle to the page and we just work around everything popping our shadow in Blend that a little, especially as our next colour is quite a bit lighter. I haven't really chosen a medium transition colour. And you could, you could put something just slightly lighter orange in between those two colours if you like. Uh, right, let's see. So we're now this one. Again, just leaving a little bit of space for the green. Sometimes with these you have to separate it out for yourself. I've heard that. There's more orange to this because it's more in shadow um, than the ones open and looking upwards. Um, and by doing that, it creates that look that these are on top and looking upwards and that these are underneath. And it starts to add that um, 3D texture and tone to your um, pages. So the next colour we have is the egg yolk. I'm going to pop that over the orange and bring that out a little bit into the next layer of colour just going to pop a little bit of the orange on top of that yellow in places just to transition it a little bit circles to blend the two colours together. This colour is honeycomb and we will layer that over the yellow and to be honest most of the rest of this will be the honeycomb there's only going to be a very slight couple of places that the ice cream will be needed um, in fact I might do the ice cream first. So our palest tone I'm going to pop just here along the edge of this petal where it's curling over to meet the light and just here along the edge of this one just to do the same. So just along the top edges just to give a little bit of uh, light touching those and then everywhere else 
in this honeycomb. Bring it right up to that edge but leave that little bit. And later when you fill other parts in and that white edge is left it will just add some contrast. So like I say my my light is um, not the best it is um, there's no natural light here at the moment <laughs> but that is those two so I'm going to uh, take the other set of three colours that we picked which was the carrot the milk and the lemonade I just thought that maybe two sets of colour in there would give a bit of um, variety to those flowers um, and so obviously you can just dab a few of the second set in there just pop one every so often here and there um, so I'm going to take my darkest colour the carrot I think we'll do this one next because if you look most of this is quite light anyway and leaving the very edge of the last flower just popping I think we'll sharpen that one as well sharp points make this a bit easier just going to pop my shadow in there and then just feather that out tiny bit just in here I think do the same colour in this one need to work out which I think that's possibly a leaf let's have a little look no, I think it is safely the second set of petals underneath. I think we're okay. Uh, as these, um, the leaves are quite big on this. So I think, I think we're okay. I think that is a flower. So I'm also going to do this one. So the second colour I have is a yellow. And it's this lemonade, it's quite a rich yellow. So we're going over all the medium grey tones with this yellow. I'm going to come back to that dark orange and again just Feather that over the yellow a little bit, so we're not too harsh. So I'd be interested to know if you have uh, done any of the pages along with me or if you have been colouring in this dream world book on your own and um, next one is milk that's our pale yellow um, just for the rest of those petals um, and how your grayscale colouring is maybe progressing if you're noticing an improvement um, I'm finally starting to see um, some improvement in my work which I'm very happy with with that starting to look a little bit more realistic shall we say and I'm, I'm starting to find it easier to create the shapes and the depth and the shadow that I want 
So there we go. So that is our combination of three. Um, just so that we're going to have a, a little bit of difference in there and they won't all just look totally uniform because flowers don't work that way. Uh, so I think you should be okay with that. You repeat the process. These down here are a little bit darker and I would probably go with my set of four colours for this. And then every so often just pick a few bits out that are less shadowed and use the lighter set of three working around. You need to remember that as we come into the background, a little bit less pressure, um, a little bit less colour um, so that they fade into the distance and it will help them to look less flat. Um, and then of course everything in the forefront would be a little bit sharper and a little bit brighter and then you're going to do the same thing up and around and in here um, like I say just do your best to avoid the stars as you can but it's not the end of the world if you get some colour on them then later on um, we are going to draw them back in so it, it's not the end of the world so next I've selected a few colours, of uh, a few options in green. Uh, let me see now, where is it? Yep. And we'll work on some of these little um, stalks and maybe do a leaf as well, I think, if we can. So I have, my darkest colour is opal green, 100 from the Cobra set and then I've got Toxic Green 104 from the Black Widow set I have Sapphire 085 from the Monarch set and then hmm, we'll see about these I've got Cool Green 076 from the Monarch and Passion 115 from the Monarch um, and let me see now do we have some i don't usually color in here you see this is the problem i don't um actually color where i film so i don't tend to have like normally i always have a piece of paper on my desk but um i don't tend to have these things in here so i just want to check Yeah, you see, I think I prefer the yellowy tone of that green. And yet I'm surprising myself. I think I'm going to actually keep this one in. And get rid of this one keep the others so we're keeping uh, our playlist is passion 115 then we move into cool green 076 then up to sapphire 085 and then opal green 100 okay and we'll see how we do with that so all we're going to do again is to pick our darkest colour. Uh, make sure we're on camera. Try and keep my hand out of the way. And most of this is in shadow. So I'm going to pop my dark green down. And then I'm going to take the one next to it, which is the sapphire. And just pop that above that green as well just stops it being a completely flat tone I don't want any cool any pale colors or any highlight in it but I don't want it to just be a very dark base green so anywhere like that just use those two together and on the page you will see the difference unlike on my camera I don't know 
Um, so I would do the same for any of these stalks. A nice dark green edging. Make sure your pencils are nice and sharp. And then this shading underneath. Moving into the next green. Again, just, uh, we'll sharpen that a little. Work that next to the other green and over the top. We don't want too much highlight because it is underneath the object, but I am going to pop a little bit of the cool green in the paler area. Just to give some uh, colour depth and it is quite a fantastical page, it doesn't look all that um, too realistic. so. I don't think you have to be completely correct. Uh, so I would do the exact same thing for, you have to work out where all your stalks are and pick them out and pop those in. These little buds, you've an option really, you can make them orange or you could make them still quite greenish uh, or even a mixture of both because they haven't quite budded yet. They're still um almost a leaf um as yet to open into the flower so sometimes when flowers are quite fresh they're still slightly green um as they take on their colour so let's uh pick one of our leaves and we'll work on that I think we'll take we'll take this guy down here We'll take our shadow tone which is the opal green and as always I will start with my darkest colour. I'll give myself a nice sharp line so I'm going to go around those petals. This kind of magic mist that's happening um, again try and avoid it if you can but it's not the end of the world. Um, probably it would be quite nice to um, pop some Posca over the top later and then kind of dab it off a little bit so that it, it it's uh, a little bit more misty than um, a harsh edge just to pop those circles back in. Or even maybe um, if you have a Prismacolor white or the Pablo white or anything like that that would probably go over quite nicely as well and give you that misty edge instead of you don't want a harsh white circle really so we're going to out outline everything you know a dark green I'm in the middle of too many projects at the moment. <laughs> um, I'm actually still working on my coloriage page for the Colour Along, uh, the Emmanuel Wild book that I'm working in at the moment. Um, but that's one of those pages that will take me forever. So I'm just doing it a little bit of a time as my main project I guess um, while trying to finish up a couple of whips I've got on the go and of course if you've watched my colour along videos you know I overpick the pages that I can actually manage so I'm desperately trying to actually get some entries in <laughs> for the uh, Colour alongs. You've got some little veins delineated 
on these leaves and I'm popping them in in my darkest colour. Uh, and I've had a few woody colours going out of my uh, the Jade Summer Chibi book and the Chibi Horror book that I'm trying to complete. Those have been lots of fun. I've got quite a lot of those pages done actually. The power of the buddy colour pushing you along, getting you to get a move on. Uh, I've done pictures with a couple of lovely ladies so far. Which is nice. Um, a viewer has asked, um, well I've had a few requests at the moment for different, different pages and different books so everybody does, I always, you go in a list, everybody's on my list in the order they were requested in so it's fair and I always get to them, it just um, takes a little bit of time because unfortunately each one of my pages is a few videos as well because it takes me a while and just the nature of these kind of colourings are a bit slower so I'm getting there if you have requested anything it will pop up so that's all my darkness I'm then going to move to my next green which is sapphire I'm going to work that out from this one just a little I'm going to pop it over the top of that one as well as it will add some of that nice warm green to some of the areas of that darker one Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> I think I zoned out there. Um, I am, as I say, getting through them, and you will always eventually see your request pop up. Um, and although I don't usually sit in here and colour, I do enjoy. Um, doing these colour videos uh, with you guys showing you how I colour these pages these are not instructional videos I know it seems a little bit like that because I kind of tell you everything I'm doing as I go along but um, that's just because I can't do a proper colour and chat because I lose my train of thought too much so I have to just tell you what I'm doing but I am just a hobbyist I'm not an expert so I'm never ever telling you what you should be doing only telling you what I'm doing as I go along and you're always very welcome to colour with me if you'd like and do show me you know I, I always pop my email details down below and I always love to see your pages. Doesn't matter whether you coloured one with me, if it's the same page I've done but totally different, or just a random page you've coloured that uh, you feel like sharing. I'm always happy to see them. There are people's pictures are so beautiful. Uh, and. Uh, Yeah, they're just me telling you what I'm doing. I know some people like to just turn on these videos and, and just tune out while they, while they colour their own page sometimes. So <laughs> however way this works as, I'm quite happy to have been useful. 
So I'm just now working in that cool green colour, which is our third tone. Bringing that pretty much everywhere. I'm going to just leave the edges for our pale highlight. They do do lovely greens, the Black Widows. They really do have some nice greens. They always work really nicely together as well. It can get very grainy on this kind of paper with the grayscale with um, these kind of pencils. So it is up to you if you do want to very carefully take a little bit of um, a pencil blending medium onto your page. I have done it with a background and it did work okay. So I think you'll be safe as long as you only use a little bit and you're careful where you put it. So I'm now going to take the Passion, that palest green. Can you see? Is my hand in the way? I don't know. There we go. Um, and I'm going to work that along this edge. Gives that edge in almost a yellow tone. They look very pretty like that. And uh, that, see, 40 minutes, what have I done? Almost nothing. Uh, so, essentially, um, you should be able to do all your flowers all the stalk work and your leaves as they come up and around. For these small vines, I would take my darkest colour, my opal green, and I am just going to follow those vines around nice and sharply. Nice crisp little lines and uh, that's your vines added in and like I say it's up to you whether you want these to be in tones of green or a bit of green dark green at the base coming down into your orange with where this very pale colour is a little bit of your yellow would probably look really nice um, and you just work it all the way up and uh, that should look really good when you're done. Um, obviously we have some work to do on the background and these little bunnies. Um, as always, because of the grayscale there, you can completely leave them alone, um, but I do tend to add my own colour over the fur so we will do that and um, there will be a part two very soon I've learnt my lesson with these videos and I filmed them all before releasing them so there's not gaps in between them uh, of too long I hope you found this useful guys and uh, this is what if it was your request what you wanted to see and I will see you in the next video. Please like them if you enjoy them so I know whether to do the colour alongs. Thank you very much for watching.